be with us on this Wednesday night Bible study. My name is Gregory Baptiste from Behold the Lamb Ministries International, where we're changing lives one life at a time. Tonight, I want to talk to you about fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Let's have a word of prayer. We're going to go right into 1 Timothy, uh, the sixth chapter. We'll start at the third verse. Father, we thank you for the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your holy word. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of your calling, what's the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe. We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hide me behind the cross so only you can be seen. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And all the believers say amen. amen. First Timothy 3, 6 and 3 says, If any man teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but he's obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, revilings, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such, withdraw yourself. So Paul is instructing Timothy that some, some men just want to dispute about things that don't matter that have no weight to them whatsoever. And most of these guys have the wrong motive anyway. He says they think that godliness is gain. We've got a lot of ministers that, that are in the ministry for the wrong reason. And so they got in the ministry to gain. And, and so Paul is instructing uh, Timothy to be careful. He said, now godliness with contentment is great gain. You no, know, we talked about godliness on Sunday. We talked about exercising ourselves in godliness. That means we need to train ourselves in the things of God. And the only way to do that is the same way you train in the physical and the natural. You work out, you do push-ups, you do sit-ups, you do all the things that will get you conditioned physically. Well, you have to do the same things to condition yourself spiritually. You've got to get up and you got to be consistent. Every morning at the same time, you need to get up and pray. You need to get up and worship God. You need to get up and read your word. You have to have a time set aside for all of that. The same way you go through some reps of sit-ups, you go through reps of push-up, you need to go through some reps of praise, some reps of worship, some reps of studying the word. See, we are slack when it comes down to doing things in the spirit realm. But it's important because you're not going to be spiritually strong if you don't do your exercise. So the same way we need to be physically fit, we need to be spiritually fit. Because when the enemy attacks, we need to be ready to wrestle. We need to be able to deal with the things that comes against us spiritually. We need to be able to handle it. And so the only way to do that is to condition ourselves to be prepared for battle. So this is the fight. We're in a warfare, and we have to understand you can't let your guards down. Anytime you get laxidated and you play around in the devil's park, you, you know you're going to pay. I, I promise you that the devil's going to make you pay every chance he gets. So give the devil no place because the devil will take you farther than you want to go. He'll take and keep you longer than you want to stay and do you worse than you could even imagine. So godliness with contentment is great gain. So why is it that we're not content? Why is it that we're still trying to get more and more stuff? Isn't that something that the world the church is just like the world, always trying to get more and more and more. Everything, they want more of everything, but more of God. We need more of God, more than anything else. He said, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. So you came in naked, and you're going to leave naked, praise God. Having food and clothing, with these we should be content. But those who desire to be rich will fall into temptations and the snare and into foolish and harmless lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. False teachers are using religion 
for financial gain. Uh, the love of money drives people into all kinds of evil things. It's important that we understand how serious this matter is. So Paul was telling Timothy, Timothy, you need to pay attention to what's going on. Not only are they trying to distract you with those ungodly teachings, but they will take you off course if you don't pay attention, if you don't stay focused. He said, you old man of God, flee from these things. Pursue righteousness, pursue godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Now, you know, we talked about it a little bit Sunday. We talked about how, how, you know, Timothy was a senior pastor in this ancient time and, and that there was a great gymnasium that was built right, right next to the center. And they had a lot of people who was given over to exercise. They were, they were committed to exercise. And, and so most of those guys were competing in wrestling matches. And so they would go into the gym and the first thing they would do was they were stripped down to nothing. And they were stripped down to nothing. And then their, their trainer would come in and they would put them on, they would earl them down and then work them over. And they would work them over. And so Paul was writing to Timothy and he was telling Timothy this because he wanted Timothy to understand. Timothy understood what was going on at that time. There were a lot of people that were competing uh, for wrestling. They were competing in, in all kinds of uh, gymnasium activity. And so Paul was letting them know that Timothy could relate to this because he wanted them to understand just like they did in the natural, they all them down and got them prepared to, to compete. He was telling them that, listen, spiritually you need to strip down to everything that hinders you from becoming more spiritual and, and take everything off that's going to keep you from doing what God has called you to do and then allow God to work you over. See, God has to work us over so that he could put that heavy, heavy oil on our lives. That all represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Some things that you deal with, you're going to need a heavy anointing. There's some things you could deal with that the anointing on your life right now is okay. But there's a place where God's going to bring us to. You're going to have to have a heavy application of all on your life. You're going to need the Holy Spirit on a whole nother level. And so you're going to find out that when you start dealing with the demonic, you're going to have to be heavily oiled to deal with some of the things that the enemy is going to throw at your life. I'm already experiencing some stuff that we're dealing with that is straight from the pits of hell. And if you ain't heavily oiled and you ain't heavily anointed, you're not going to be able to deal with this stuff. Mm -hmm. So God is saying you need to prepare yourself. You need to exercise yourself in godliness. You need to spend time in prayer. You need to have a certain time where you designate for prayer. Every morning, the same time, you need to be consistent about that. Mm -hmm. Just like we consistent about everything, and we consistent about getting our nails done every week, praise God. You need to be consistent about getting in the Word every morning, consistent about praying, consistent about worship, consistent about prayer, consistent about fellowship. Because the Bible said, don't forsake your assembly together with other believers. So you need fellowship. You need to get in fellowship with other believers so you can draw off of one another. Build one another up in things of the spirit. God wants us to become strong spiritually so we can take this thing for the kingdom. The enemy is fine fighting. He's trying with all of his might to distract, to pull people down, to, to hinder. But God will allow us to strengthen ourselves in the things of God so that we can face the enemy, face the darkness with an unrelentless fear. Hallelujah. I said God will use us to drive the forces of darkness back, but we've got to be prepared. We've got to be prayed up. We've got to be prayed up and fasted up. We've got to be strengthened in the things of the spirit so God can have his way in our lives. So Paul is writing to Timothy and said, Timothy, don't be distracted. Timothy thought, well, you know what? Once God sends some help, then it'll give me a relief. But God got Paul told Timothy, no, no, no. Don't think it's going to get easier. It's not going to get any easier. It's going to get harder. And not only that, but the enemy won't just attack your finances. He'll attack your health. He'll attack anything and everything that's attached to your life. So you have to understand you have an enemy. And the Bible says no weapon to form against us prosper. But guess what? We have to be in a place where we are in God's will for our lives. Too many times we get distracted, we get strayed off. And I'm telling you, we need to prepare for battle. 
This is a battle cry. I'm telling you, prepare yourself for battle because the enemy is mad. Like the Bible says, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Praise God. He's mad and he's going to attack. And he's going to catch those that are vulnerable, those that are not prayed up, those that are not in faith, those that are not in the spirit. And he's going to have his way with them. But I'm telling you, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to gird yourself up in the things of God. Get in the word so the word can get in you. Praise God. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I, I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ who witnessed the God confession before Pontius Pilate. God has said, listen, Timothy, I want you to understand this is warfare. This is warfare. Do not be distracted by all the things that you see going on around you. Don't be pulled away from what God has called you to. Get in the word. Get in the word so that the word can get in you so that you could fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. You know, if if you're corner minded, the things that you're going to mind the things of the flesh. Too many times we're too corner minded. We draw toward the flesh. We always pull in toward the fleshly things. Mm -hmm. The Bible said to be corner minded is death, but the spiritual mind is life and peace. So when you spend that kind of time and you program yourself to spend time in the word, spend time in prayer, spend time in worship, you're going to do spiritual things. Mm -hmm. You're going to move into the things of the spirit. You know, the only reason why you're moving toward the things of the flesh is because you mind the things of the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you're governed by fleshly things, then of course you're going to always draw to the flesh. Mm -hmm. Well, the flesh profits nothing. So if you're going to get anything done, it's going to have to be by the spirit. Those that are spiritually minded, those are the ones that are going to do great things for the Lord. I remember when we first got into things of God, we got so fired up. And the first thing we did, we started doing spiritual things. Instead of being drawn to the flesh, we started going to nursing homes, to hospitals. You know, we went visit the homes. We just we did the spiritual things. And as we begin to exercise our faith in doing what was right, God met us on the scene. God went out there with us. So we didn't go alone. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So when you get busy doing God's work, God will be with you. He'll show up every single time. I mean, we we went from, from the charity hospital to the, to the emergency room. And, you know, it took faith to go in there. Man, they had so many people in that emergency room. We went in there and cleared the room out. We just got to lay hands on him. Praise the Lord. young in the faith. And look, we just took God at his word and believed. And man, we prayed for so many people and people was getting out of there. People have been sitting there seven, eight hours waiting to be seen. And we said, look, what's wrong with you? Tell me, let's, let us pray. And we prayed. And they said, I feel better. A lot of them started leaving. They started getting out. And that's the work of the spirit. That, but people don't step out in faith and do that because they're too busy serving themselves. You can't serve God and serve yourself too. You know, you're not your own anymore. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your spirit and your body, which is the Lord's. So when you get to doing spiritual things, like going by your neighbor and checking on them, seeing if they need anything, or the lady next door that you know can't drive, if you need to take her to the store, there's so many things you can do that are spiritual. So many things that you can do that that are minister grace to the hearer. Uh, we just need to be conscious. If you pray in the morning, God will give you your instructions for the day. I promise you, if you talk to God early in the morning, he'll tell you what's going to happen through the course of that day. You may not know every dot and tittle, but he'll show you some things that you know is going to happen. And all you got to do is just follow suit and allow the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide you. You know, you got to trust that the Holy Spirit will lead us. When we finish praying, we ought to ask God, okay, God, what is my instruction for the day? And I promise you, God will instruct you in righteousness. He'll lead and guide you. He'll show you the people that are hurting. Listen, Jesus said, I don't work except the Father work. So I'm not pouring the word down in people's mouth. They don't want to drink it. I'm only giving the word to those who are hungry for it. You know how you know they're hungry? They'll begin to share their problems. They'll begin to talk about their pain. 
their hurt, their struggle, their trauma. And then when you hear them talk about it, then you know God is talking to you about pouring in oil. It's time to minister. When you hear people talk about their hurt, they talk about their broken relationship, they talk about their parents, they talk about the things that bother them, it's time to minister grace to the hearer. It's time for us to understand the working of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't come overnight, but as we begin to spend time in prayer, as we begin to set aside time to get in the word, God will begin to talk to us through his word. He instructs us through his word. The Bible is basic instruction before leaving earth. So we need to know what God is saying. What he's saying in this hour. We're living in the last days. We're living in end time. When you see all the things that's going on around you in this world today, you know we're living in end times. But we need to be connected to heaven so that we have our instructions. So when it's time to move, we can move. When it's time to stay, we can stay. When it's time to pray, we can pray. We need to be in fellowship. We need to be committed. Amen. That's our problem is we are not committed to anything but our own desires, our own appetites. But we're not committed to the things of God. When we get committed to God, we'll follow his lead. Where he leads me, I will follow. We got a team together. We started going to the nursing homes. We started going to the hospitals. We were going everywhere. And we went to this one nursing home. It's called Sunrise Nursing Home. It's on Lake Forest. They closed it down. It's an empty building now. But when we were going there, we started going in that place, and we started bringing our worship team in there. We just having a great time in the Lord. We would go there every week. And, uh, man, these people got so excited about the things of God. They started accepting Christ. And before you know it, people started getting healed and delivered. And, you know, the, the last time we went, I'll never forget that, there was a few of the people, the, the tenants that were there, they said that we were leaving today. We, we, leave, we, they ain't nothing wrong with me no more. I'm going back to my house. And they were ready to leave. And so we were creating some kind of problem for this nursing home because that's how they get their money. Uh, they get these people's checks. And so they asked us not to come in. Wasn't that something? Because we were arousing the people. The people were ready to go home. People say, ain't nothing wrong with me. People pray for me. I got healed. I'm ready to go back to my house. I'm ready to leave this place. And so they were ready to leave. And I'm telling you that because I know that when you start stepping out in faith and laying hands on people, God will show up and show out. He's waiting on you. He said, you'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. All right, so all we got to do is do what the word says. Our problem is we don't understand the power of his word. That God's word is life and life more abundant. And that words, when we speak words, they like containers. They, they're either full of faith or they're either fear. But I'm going to tell you what, they will produce after this kind. So you better be careful what words you release out of your mouth. Because I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said you can have what you say. But let me say this. You've been having what you say because you've been saying the wrong stuff. So you better be careful what you say, because death and life is in the power of the tongue, and them that love it will eat its fruit. Mm -hmm. You better start saying what God said. Homo legia, say the same thing as the word of God. God is concerned about us speaking his word, because his word has power. It's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than a two-headed sword. It will pierce asunder, divide of the spirit, soul, joints, and marrow, is a discern of the thoughts, and of the intents of the heart. When you speak the word of God, God will penetrate the hearts of his people. I mean, I find myself talking to people and I be telling stuff that God put in my heart to say. And then the guy stopped me and said, man, what's wrong with you? I said, what is wrong with you? He said, man, were you looking in my bedroom last night? I said, no, I don't even know where you live. <laughs> he said, because you talking about stuff that happened in my bedroom last night. I said, well, God knows what happened in your bedroom. And whatever it was that happened in your bedroom, if it wasn't something that's supposed to be happening, you need to get that right. Because God knows exactly what you're doing. And he wants to put his finger on it. And sometimes God will expose people without you even knowing. See, if I knew I had an opportunity to be private and, and walk around like it was me, it wasn't me because I had no idea what I was talking about. I was just sharing whatever God put in my heart to share. 
And all I'm telling you is when you prayed up, when you get in, in God's presence, when you spend that time with him, you're more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit always wants to lead and to guide us. He's always wanting to use you to minister to somebody else. Unless you need ministry. Sometimes we run around doing so much work for God till we run around on empty. Mm-hmm. And so we so empty, we don't even know we empty. That's the sad part. When you empty, you don't know it. You know, you just run around doing all the work for the ministry, but you had time to fuel up. You got to stop and gas up. You got to set some time aside to say, you know what? I'm not going to do anything today, but just bask in his presence. You know how the women say they need that me time? You need God time. You need time for you to just let God pour into you. Because we run so much and we pull out, we pull out, and we pull out, and we we pull out till we end. And we don't even refuel. You got to refuel so that you can have something to pull out. Praise God. It's, it's more important for you to spend that quality time in God's presence every single day so that you could stay on full. See, I, my wife likes to call it stay on full. You know, you go around the block, she won't stop and gas back. And, forth. <laughs> and I don't blame you. In the same way you stay on full in the car, you ought to stay on full in your life. You know, when you come home from a, a busy day at work and you didn't pull it and pull it out, you need to fill back up again. If you don't fill up that night, fill up in the morning. But fill up because you need to stay full. We need to stay full so that we can minister. There's people that are hurting, people that are broken, people all around us that's going through all kinds of hardship and hell. And we got the answers. What is that? For you to have the answers to the problem they're having and you too tired to give it to you. You too tired and exhausted because you've been running all day. Exert yourself. But listen, I want you to understand that this is warfare. That spiritual warfare is not what you think. Mm -hmm. It's more in prayer. It's more in praise. It's more in worship than this physically. I mean, Paul wrote to Timothy using a natural analogy, but he was talking spiritual. He was telling him, you strip away, strip everything off of your life that hinders your walk with God. We can start right there. The Bible said, you know, take everything off. Cast off everything that'll be a hindrance to your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of the stuff that we allow, that we towed around with us, is a hindrance. Mm -hmm. And then we don't know why God didn't show up. Well, God can't show up until you strip yourself from the things that that are displeasing to him. So Paul told Timothy, just like those men that competed in this wrestling match, they stripped down to nothing so that their trainer could all them up and work them over. God wants to work us over. He wants to work out that, that bad attitude, that, that behavior pattern, that addiction, that, that the things that you do that that are hinder your, your walk with the Lord, that are hinder your testimony. You know, that's the thing that God wants to work out of you so that he can put that heavy, heavy application of all on your life. You know, when you got a heavy application of all in your life, you really don't have to say a whole lot. I can tell you, people know there's something different about that guy. Something different about that young lady. They'll single you out. They'll begin to say, man, I don't know what it is, but something about you. What is it? And it's it's that heavy, heavy application of oil. When God puts that on your life, you know, when you when you do a whole lot, you don't have to say a whole lot. I, I remember going to Angola State Penitentiary. And me and my wife would drive out there in faith with this little Cadillac. And uh, we had some electrical problems. And God only knows you had to be out of your mind. See, we were fanatic. I'm telling you, we were radical for the Lord. We were fanatic. Uh, we knew that they had electrical problems. We still went way out there and going <laughs> with that car, knowing that the lights might go out at any time. And and sure enough, we went all the way there, uh, preached the gospel, um, I had the service that night, and I, I remember we prayed the whole trip on the way there. We prayed the whole time, several hours, just praying in the spirit, worshiping. By the time we got there, the, the, the oil was so heavy on our lives. So I, I got in there and walked up, and I, I could all I could do was worship. 
you know, I just began to worship. And and when I began to worship, it felt like there was a coat that fell from heaven on my life. That was that heavy application of oil. And when it fell, I fell to my knees and, 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 and began to weep. And I promise you, when I lifted my eyes up, everybody in the place was on their knees weeping. God was doing a work in that place. I had opened my mouth and said one word. You know why? Because of that heavy application of oil. When you get in the presence of God and let him saturate you with his anointing, you say one word and people begin to weep. I don't know if you ever experienced that. I've talked to people, and before I finished, people was crying. I don't even know what they were crying about. Because God began to deal with them because of that heavy oil that was on my life. But I tell you what, on the way home from that, that trip, we had such a glorious time that night. And like I said, I didn't have to preach that night. God did all the preaching. People gave their lives to Christ, and we we talked, and we fellowshiped, and we broke bread, and they asked questions. And we just had a great time of fellowship. And on our way home, we were on our way home, and right at the at the fork in the road, the lights went. And boy, I tell you, a, a tractor trailer truck was coming from the other angle, and he hit his high beams on and gave us lights. And look, we would have never got out of that. That road is a snake road. If you ever been to Angola, you know that road is like a snake road. You go, you're going into a ditch. But boy, God was gracious and he was with us the whole time. And that, that track and trailer truck put his high beams on and he gave us light all the way to the, to the high road. When we got to the road, amazingly, as soon as we got to the road, our light came on and the track and trailer went the other way. He blew it home. Boop, 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 boop. I said, Lord, look at God. Our angel stood by me this night. I can say, if you're crazy enough to go way out there to angle with a car that you know the lights might go out, I'm crazy enough to provide light. <laughs> Lord, don't tell me what God won't do. See, God will move when you believe. Only believe. See, our faith has to be at a level. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. You got to believe. Only believe and you see the salvation of your God. He is the light of the world. There's nothing God can't do but lie. And so I'm telling you these stories because I know God is stirring us up in the things of the spirit. I remember my daughter had a severe Cadillac and her life, one of the headlights was going out. And I told her, I said, you can't buy that car without one with just one light. And, and so I said, but if we could pray, you believe God, we'll, we'll believe God to give us light. <laughs> we went out there, laid hands on that car, and light came through the sense. I mean, there was no, no bulb in the thing, but they had light coming out of it. She went home with that car just like that, too. But I, I, said, I said that because when you believe, only believe, and you will see. I mean, I, don't, I can't explain until this day how light came out of that, that shell. There was no bulb in it, but there was a light shining out of that shell. Praise God. Don't tell me what God can't do. So sometimes you got to remind yourself of the miracles God showed you so you can know that he's still in the miracle working business. But I want you to understand that this is serious, serious business. You got to fight the good fight of faith. You know, I've been fighting all week with my health. Never been attacking me. Um, but I understand what, what's going on. It's a spiritual attack. I do know that. I do understand that, you know, the things that we're about to confront, the things that we're about to deal with, we're going to have to have a heavy application of oil. Uh, the oil I had on my life ain't going to be good enough for where we're going. And so the people that are going with me are going to have the same application of oil on their lives. So I'm telling you that if you're going to be moving forward in this ministry, you're going to have to make a greater commitment because you're going to have to have a heavy application of oil on your life to deal with the demand that we're about to deal with. We're moving into a deliverance ministry where most of the people we confront are going to have to be delivered. People deliver from trauma, people deliver from all kinds of things that have affected their lives. And God is saying, I'm going to equip you to do the work. Praise mm -hmm. God. And so you have to commit to God and give your commitment to him. And he's going to provide what you need to do the work. I'm just encouraging you tonight 
that you need to make a commitment. The word commitment means to be joined. You know, people get married, they get a license, they get a tax reduction because they're married, but they are not joined. They may be mad, but they're not joined. The first time they get to the first fallout, the big, big blowout, they're ready to split because they have never been joined. You got to be joined together. That's what the word committed means. It means to be joined together. Praise God that nothing can separate us. I, listen, I've set my forehead like flint. Flint is the hardest rock you can find. And when you set your forehead like Flint, that means I'm not going to be moved no matter what. I'm not changing my mind. I've made my mind up and I'm not going back. If I was going to go back, I would have went back over. Mm -hmm. I've faced too many oppositions that have make me go back. Mm -hmm. There was many times when I said, you know what? I was better off in the world. The devil is a lie. I ain't going back. I ain't turning around. I'm going straight forward. And I'm going in the things of God. I'm going to do what God called me to do. And I'm going to finish my course. I'm going to finish my race. God has said before me. I just thank God for the word of God that keeps us. I'm encouraging you to get you a regimen. Get you a regimen. Get you a time when you pray. Get you a time when you worship. You need a time to just listen. To be still. To be quiet. Because God wants to talk. It's not all about just running your mouth. You know, sometimes we just... You know, we just want to talk, 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 God, tell God all the things you want to do and never listen. Always talk and never listen. No, no, we need dialogue. We don't, we need God to talk back. And the only way he can do that is if you give him the time to speak. It's one thing for you to talk to God. It's another thing for God to talk to you. We need to give him the time, listen to him. Okay, so you shared your heart. You shared all the things that bother you. You told him all about all your situations, your problems. Now let him pour into you. God will talk to you if you will listen. And he won't scream. It's a small, still voice. But he'll speak. And when he speaks, you know it's him. Amen. You have a witness in your heart that it was God. Who gave it to you. It's a lot of times God speaks through his word. He'll speak through the, the scriptures. He'll, he'll speak through worship. He'll even speak through songs. I've had times where God will speak to me through a song. And I hear the song and I'm like, wait a minute. I go back and listen and say, man, that's exactly what I needed to hear. So God knows how to get the message to you. It's just a matter of you tuning your ears to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. We have to become sensitive to the things of God. So it's important that you have a personal relationship with Almighty God. See, God had already dealt with the sin problem. So everything we're dealing with is the sins, which is the root. That's fruit off the root. But the root was the sin problem. Jesus died so that we could be free from sin. So all the other things are just fruit on the tree. The things that we do every day that are not like him, that's just the fruit. The root cause problem has been dealt with. The sin problem has been dealt with. And now we have to do is we have to accept what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross and begin to walk in faith. Walk in faith and obedience. That's the key, obedience. And begin to speak the word. Like he said, speak the word only. Remember the Roman centurion said, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. He all he needed was a word from God. He said, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word only. So many times we need God to show up. No, he don't have to show up. All he has to do is speak the word. Speak the word and he'll change your situation. And then hold fast. To the, to the promises of God. God's promises are yes and amen. If he said it, it's coming to pass. All you have to do is stand on his word. Confess the word, though. You need to confess the word because there's power in confession. You need to say it out loud. Read your Bible out loud. You know what? Your brain needs to know your decision. You need to read the word out loud. Because you need to hear 
with your ear of the spirit, what the Holy Spirit is saying. It's not good enough to read it to yourself. You need to read it out loud. If you hadn't started that practice, start practicing reading the word out loud so that your spirit can hear what you're reading. Because when your spirit is full of the word of God, it's going to come out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. We've got to get the word down in our hearts. Though. How do you get it in your heart? By constantly meditating. Meditating on the word. Because meditating is like chewing. The more you chew, you break it down to the point where you swallow it. And then it goes down into your digestive system. Well, when you meditate on the word of God, when you chew on God's word, you constantly chew on the scriptures, it get down in your spirit. And guess what happens? When it's time, when you want to make a withdrawal, it's down there because you didn't made a deposit. Some of y'all are trying to make deposits and you ain't made no withdrawal. You can go to the bank and try to make a withdrawal. If you ain't got no money in the bank, the man going to ask you, is there something wrong with you? You won't make a withdrawal, but you had not made a deposit. You're going to have to make a deposit in your life so when the time comes, you have something to withdraw. It's time that we fellowship with the Holy Spirit so that he could teach us the things of God. That's what he came to do, to lead and to guide us into all truth. God wants us to be strengthened, fortified, so that we could stand against the forces of darkness and that we could deliver. See, we are called to snatch people from over a dangling fire of hell. People are dangling over hell. And God wants us to snatch them from over that fire. But you can't snatch them when you ain't prepared. Mm -hmm. See, one thing about I knew about the three Hebrew boys is they were in fire. But the fire that was on their life was greater than the fire they threw them in. And so when God puts you on fire, you can stand over the fire and snatch people from over fire of hell because you can't be burned. See, because God's glory is like a fire. It's like fire going from your loins up to your loins down. God will cover you and protect you when you sell out. Our problem is we still want to hold on to the world and God too. You can't have them both. You're going to have to forsake one or the other. You're going to have to let go of the world or you're going to have to let go of God, but you can't have them both. You're going to have to make a decision. What's more important to you? Do you want to fulfill your destiny? You want to fulfill your purpose in life? Then you're going to have to give God everything. You can't serve God part-time and have full-time benefits. You're going to have to give him your all. That's not asking for much. You've already messed up 32 years of your life trying to do it your way. Why don't you give it to God and let him have it his way? Praise God. If you don't know the Lord and the Father of your sin and you like to pray, I would like to pray with you. Would you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come in your heart? Say, Father, I, I believe that Jesus Christ died and went to hell so I wouldn't have to go. I accept the sacrifice he made on the cross for me. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Lord Jesus, come to my heart, be my personal savior. From this day forward, I will serve you. Now, Lord, I'm asking you to break that curse, that generation curse off my life. And bring me into the fullness of what you've called me for. I am ready to serve you with my whole heart. I turn my back on the world, on the influences that come from outside. I will no longer listen to those voices. I will only listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for changing my life. From this day forward, I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer. You need to find your good Bible teaching church that can teach you the word of God. We are Behold the Lamb Ministries International at 1520 Alva Street every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. We will not hold you long, but I guarantee you will make you strong. You need a good Bible teaching church so you can grow in grace and knowledge of the truth. If you want to sow into this ministry, we'll set up with Givelify. We're also set up with cash app is dollar sign Behold the Lamb Church. Everything you sow into this ministry will be used to build the kingdom and to touch lives all around the world. Let me tell you something. One thing about commitment is 
you need to be able to receive on the same level you give. If you're into a ministry or you're involved in something where you're not receiving the same level you're given, then you're in the wrong ministry. My name is Gregory Baptiste from the Old Land Ministries International, where we're changing lives. One life at a time. God bless you.